automatic cable strippers, combination pliers, side cutters with insulation stripper. So for this one, get yourself a good set of pliers. You don't have to spend a fortune, but it is recommended in the industry to uh, to get yourself some insulated pliers. In fact, all the professionals use this sort of thing. Um, they're insulated, usually up to a thousand volts. Uh, so if you accidentally do cut through something that's live, um, you're not going to hopefully get a, a shot from it. So as we can see here, um, I'm just stripping back the cable ready for terminating. And we cut back the excess um, outer sheathing, leaving the inner cores. And I'm just using that as a guide at the moment, and I'm going to put an indentation in it, as you can see. And I'm going to now, this is the difficult bit, and that's stripping it back using the pliers or combination pliers, and I'm folding it over to. Um, to give it a, a, an extra bit of bite when it actually goes into the accessory. So as we can see there, that's the finished product. Uh, it's really important that we do this if you've got one cable to terminate inside an accessory, whether it be a, a socket or a spur unit, um, and especially if you're changing socket faces over, if you've got enough cable left, try and always double it over. If you just have one single cable, it can crush the cable, it can cause all sorts of fires, um, other problems, high resistance joints. Make sure you give it a tug, as I'm doing there in the video. Make sure it's not going to come out. I'm going to strip the neutral down just to give you an idea of uh, at normal speed. There we go. It does take years to, to try and master this sort of thing, um, and it will take plenty of practice. You know, eventually you'll get used to doing it. I'll just tighten this one up and in a minute I'm going to take it back out and show you the sort of uh, damage that occurs to the cable if it's terminated correctly. You can under tighten them as well as over tighten them. You don't have to put all your force into it. Just give it a good old, um, you know, sort of twist with your fingers. Make sure it's not coming out. And it's also a good idea once you've replaced it um, in, into the actual accessory itself. If you've taken wires out and replaced it. Just give them a little wiggle, make sure that they don't rub loose and then it might be that you can just get another quarter of a turn on the screwdriver. So as we can see there, not much damage occurred um, and yet it was actually quite tight inside the socket face itself. So this time we're going to have a look at things that I see people doing on a regular basis, which is bad practice, so I'll cut the end off. And you see this ringing effect um, that people do, and uh, it's uh, it's really bad for the cable, especially the conductor underneath. Um, it is only made of, of soft copper, and if you're using any metal instrument like that or a Stanley knife, if you go through to the uh, the burr conductor underneath, um, it causes it to become brittle. Now, as you, what I'm trying to demonstrate there is that. If you were to push that back into a socket and the cable was to bend and flex, there's a good chance it's going to break off in the socket. That wouldn't automatically mean that the socket would no longer work. It could it could still work, but you'd have a high resistance joint. High resistance joint equals heat. Heat equals fire. This is the earth cable. And uh, again, there's no sleeving over the top of that, but I'm just demonstrating if it was to get some damage through nicking. Um, if you try and put that in, look how easy that fractures and breaks away. These are uh, side cutters and they've got a, a cable stripping feature in them. Uh, usually 1mm, 1 1.5, 2.5 and we can see how easy that is to use those. Nice and clean. Next we're going to use these um, automatic cable strippers. And what I'm demonstrating here is that they've got a, a cutting feature and they've also got a crimp feature in the handles. I've not used those to be honest. Um, this is great if you're cutting or you're stripping back lots of cables into junction boxes. Not so hot if you're going into the backs of sockets with them because the actual machine head or the cable uh, stripping head uh, limits the amount of cable that you can actually strip off with inside a, the confines of a socket box. But as you can see, it does a pretty clean job of it. Um, I'll just fold the ends over just to demonstrate again that uh, it's good practice to do that. There we 
you see. Now it will vary and that's what I'm demonstrating here how much you actually uh, need to fold those over depending on how deep you've got in the socket. Um, some accessories are deeper than others. This is now where I'm actually going to terminate two cables into the accessory where you've got a loop in loop out situation say like on a ring main um, or indeed a radial but uh, it's more pre predominantly that you get problems with these sorts of connections um, coming loose, you've not quite got one wire in but the most important thing to make sure is that no burker conductors are showing outside of the accessory or the termination and that uh, the termination is actually secure within the accessory itself as I'm pointing out there um, you need to check also that the polarity is correct collect so you need to make sure that the blue is in the neutral and the brown is in the live thanks for watching please remember to like the video and hit that subscribe button